Good afternoon. Welcome to Beneficent Congregational Church, United Church of Christ. Welcome to this joyful celebration of the ordination to ministry of Germaine Pearson. Though we are scattered far and wide in our separate homes, we are gathered together under the sacred canopy of the Holy Spirit this afternoon. Amen. At every Beneficent worship service, we make our welcome explicit. Welcome to people of all colors, sexual orientations, and gender identities and expressions, all body shapes and sizes, all ages, and everywhere along the spectrum of physical, mental, and emotional health and well being. Because you are here, this body of Christ is whole and perfect. And now, prepare to be anointed by the Holy Spirit. We continue with our prelude. for that beautiful prelude. I count it all joy to be present during the ordination of my friend, Germaine. And we now begin with the reading of 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 11 to 16. These are the things you must insist on and teach. Let no one despise your youth, but set the believers an example in speech and conduct in love, in faith, in purity. Until faith and purity. I'm sorry, I'm gonna begin again. These are the things you must insist on and teach. Let no one despise your youth, but set the believers an example in speech and conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. Until I arrive, give attention to the public reading of the scripture. To exalting, to teaching, do not neglect the gifts that are in you, which was given to you through prophecy with the laying on of hands by the council of elders. Put these things into practice. Devote yourself to them so that all may see your progress. Pay close attention to yourself and continue in these things. For in doing this, you will save both yourself and your hearers. Amen. I don't know what happened. Bishop Orlando, you need to unmute yourself, please. 
Thank you very much. Don't have my glasses. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Let us pray. May we pray. <clears throat> Almighty God, we come before you right now in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' mighty name. God, before we ask anything from you, we want to thank you for everything. First of all, God, we want to thank you for watching over us last night. Thank you, God. Grace and mercy woke us up this morning, and you've been with us all day long. Now, God, we just want to thank you for allowing us to be here for our dear brother to participate in this great ordination service. Lord, we want to thank you, O oh God, and for his life, his health, his strength, O oh God. And we pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, that you will continue, O oh God, to bless him, to be a blessing to others as he goes forth in this new chapter of ministry. Lord God, I understand that this is an ordination service for our brother, but Lord, the truth of the matter, it was already done, as I'm reminded in the book of Jeremiah, when God said to Jeremiah, before the foundation of the world, I called you, I set you aside, I appointed you, I ordained you. So Lord God, before his mom and dad ever got together, before he was ever in the womb, oh God, he was already ordained by you. So Father, we thank you that we're now going through the process of this ordination. And I pray God that in Jesus' mighty name, Father, as he goes forth to teach, to preach, and yes, to sing, there will always be a message in his song, always be a message in his teaching, his preaching, oh God. Father, we just ask, Father, that you will continue to cover him with your blood, Jesus, like never before. God, ordain him, oh God, against the oppositions. Ordain him, oh God, against the trials, the tribulation, anything that may come his way. Father, you continue to be with him and for him. No weapon formed against him shall prosper, because if you be for him, who can be against him? So God, I pray in Jesus' name, let your will be done, God, in his life, in his ministry, and those who will receive the word of God from him from this day forward. We thank you, God. We love you, God. We honor you, God. Let your glory be revealed in this ordination service. Thank you for the song. Thank you for the scripture and everything else that's about to take place. It's all for your glory, for your honor. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, we pray. Those who love God and those who love Jermaine, come on and say amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. 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 Amen.
Hat, there's no sound. Could you start it over? It would be all right if you changed my name. I told Jesus it would be all right if you changed my name. I told Jesus it would be all right. Be all right. Be all right. Be all right. I Smiling and nodding since I've been in seminary. You know, that awkward, often uncomfortable feeling you have when you need to bite your tongue because you just might cuss out someone. Because you're trying to frame them, you know, because their views and perspectives are contrary to yours. And that moment you feel like. It would be all right if he changed my name. I told Jesus it would be all right if he changed my name. I told Jesus it would be all right. Be all right. Be all right. Be all right. I told Jesus it would be all right if he changed my name. Name. I think I've mastered the art of smiling and nodding since I've been in seminary. You know, that awkward, often uncomfortable feeling you have when you need to bite your tongue because you just might cuss out someone because you're trying to refrain from, you know, because their views and perspectives run contrary to yours. And in that moment, you feel like it's you against the world. Y'all know what I'm talking about? As I reflect on these moments, it's when I realize how much I've grown over the past three years. And the fear of the emergence of my inner angry black man is no longer. It is in this true act of humility when I feel stronger and more tuned to God than ever before. True story. There I was in the middle of teaching my weekly Bible lesson to my youth group for Con at One. When a 16-year-old teenager comes to me and says, you know, I don't like you. I wish we had Mr. Terrence as our teacher again. And I'm thinking to myself, little girl, I don't like you either. <laughs> I wish Mr. Terrence was your teacher too. But of course, <laughs> but of course I can't say that. So what do I do? I politely smile <laughs> and I nod. And then I pray and I ask God, why have you called to work me with such a per why have you called to work with such a population that doesn't respect my time or appreciate my hard work or dedication? And I thought that it would get better during Con Ed 2, but was I wrong? And it didn't take long for me to see how much jealousy runs fluently throughout this thing called ministry. You would never believe how much animosity I received just because my resume read the Candler School of Theology instead of IT. Being honest. Having to filter questions, why didn't you come here? And I need to make sure they are teaching you the right stuff over there. I don't just let anybody in my pulpit. I will put you up when I'm ready to put you up. You will preach when I tell you to. 
And even though it hurts, I mean, it really hurts. What do I do? I smile and I, and I nod. But this time, I'm angry with God, and I learned from the Psalms that it's okay to lament. Okay, God, you mean to tell me you sent me to Atlanta all the way from L.A. to hear folks say, I'm not going to let you practice on my congregation? Let me get this straight. So I quit my full-time job, borrowed from my 401k, sold all of my belongings, lost a few friends along the way. I've gained 17 pounds because of stress. I... <laughs> I'm borderline depressed because I can't get anything higher than a 77 on my OT test. I'm taking showers. I'm taking showers at the wood pack because my hot water has got cut off and no matter what I do I can't <coughs> seem to shake this cough not to mention I'm tired of calling Sprint asking for an extension just to hear folk devalue my degree and not affirm me in ministry you mean to tell me I gave up everything to follow this call that you placed on my life and no matter what I do it seems like nothing will go right and when I finally submit and do what you have told me to do, there are roadblocks and all hell breaks loose. And if one more person asks me one more time what am I doing after graduation, I promise I am going to yell. Ah! God didn't tell me what to do after graduation. God just told me to come here. It is in my anger, my anguish, my frustration, I hear the voice of the Lord. Everything that you are going through is preparing you for what's next. And you can rest assured that when I place you on a platform, you will be able to handle any and everything that comes your way, the good, the bad, and even the ugly in ministry. Can you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? If I can clothe the grass of the field, which is here today and thrown in the fire tomorrow, will I not clothe you? The only thing that I can do, smile and not. Okay. But Jesus told me that the world would turn against me if he changed my name. Jesus told me that the world would turn against me if he changed my name. But Jesus told me it would be all right if he changed my name. When I think about the significant name changes in the Bible, my heart and soul has a mini revival. It's like a, a fresh awakening. Something on the inside of me stirs up and I get excited about my calling and ministry all over again. It's that same feeling that I felt when I received that phone call at 6.30 in the morning on a cool Cali Monday morning in January. Hello, this is Mary Louise Boyd, Mary Lou Boyd's calling from the Candler School of Theology, and we are glad to offer you a mission to Candler for the fall of 2013. That, that feeling. That's what I mean by a revival, something new, something fresh. See, I get excited about name changes because it reminds me that God hand, God's hand is still upon my life, even when I can't feel it. Abram became Abraham because of the covenant that was made by God to make him the father of many nations. And when the promise was threatened because of Abraham's willingness to sacrifice Isaac, God stepped in and honored Abraham's obedience. Let's be honest. It's a sacrifice to come to seminary. But many of us are here out of obedience. People don't understand how much of yourself you have to give just to get that MD behind your name. And it's not like we're looking for fortune or fame. We're just trying to do the work that God has called us to do. That's why we get frustrated in ministry when our own congregations, our own churches, affirm us as ministers. But we must remember that God calls us and not man. And this is why we must continue to trust God even if we don't fully understand the plan. This message may not be 
for everybody. But this message is for that somebody who will go out of their way to care for anybody, but has nobody to care for them. This is for the person who has been told you don't fit the mold to do ministry, or your skirt is too short, or your hair is too long. This is for the person who has ever felt unsure. This is for the person who feels lost, alone, confused, scared, mentally blind, and sometimes emotionally impaired. This is for the individual who has had sleepless nights, worrying about what's next. This is for that first year student who has given your all, but you still fall short of your best. I have a message for you. God protects where God directs. And God will provide where God guides. So keep the faith. Just know that the same God that brought you to seminary will get you through seminary and help you along your way through your ministry. You know why? Because Jesus told me it would be all right if he changed my name. Jesus told me it would be all right if he changed my name. But I told Jesus it would be all right. Be all right. Be all right. But Jesus told me it would be all right if he changed my name. Amen. Amen. Amen, brother. Amen. 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 My task today is simple, but certainly not easy. Uh, how could I come behind such a remarkable uh, expression um, today? And I remember that day like it was yesterday. Uh, my name is Reverend Dominique Lester. Um, coming to you all today, all the way from New York City via the Greater Centennial AME Zion Church in Mount Vernon, New York. Uh, Mama Cheryl, it's good to see you today, uh, <laughs> and uh, I'm excited uh, to share this, and I just texted Jermaine and told him that the Holy Spirit is real, and he's about to see why. Um, Jermaine is affectionately known as the Dean to our crew, um, Ed Emery, and it is exciting to know that the Lord is still specializing in changing names. So today, I'm just reminded um, of that, and I just wanted to share a short reflection, a short story um, to kind of uh, honor him on today. I recall vividly uh, going to seminary, kicking and screaming with the worst attitude one could take with them to a learning space. I didn't want to get to know anybody. I didn't want to make any friends. I was angry with God because God took me from my good paying job to now going to be a, a broke graduate student once again I had all kinds of issues with God. And then I had made up my mind that I would be antisocial the entire time I was there until orientation happened. And I saw this black guy with dreadlocks, with locks come down the steps into the commons area, bubbly and bouncing. And he found his way to the other only few black people that were in the room. And we immediately became friends. And it was so fascinating because as we became friends, we became brothers in the same vein. And one of the most amazing pieces was about our experience together was becoming friends in the sense of learning how our call narrative came into play. And I recall very vividly 
Jermaine telling me a story about the furniture store. And it was at the furniture store that Jermaine heard the voice of God. And as I began to reflect on what to share today, I recalled that furniture store, that furniture store story. It was there that I was reminded in the furniture store, there are essentially two rooms. There is a display room. The display room is where everything looks good. It's, everything is put on display. Everything is propped up perfectly. Everything is postured just the way we want it. The light hits everything just perfect. Everything on the display room looks good. That's the first room, but the back room is where things are a little bit dirty in the furniture store. That's where things are a little bit unhinged in the furniture store. That's where things are broken in the furniture store. That's where things go to get fixed in the furniture store. And I was reminded of our seminary experience because Jermaine, that's where you were during seminary. You were in the back room of the furniture store. In the back room, things seemed to be a little bit broken. Things seemed to be a little bit unheard. Things seemed to be a little bit underdeveloped, but you were in fact in the back room of the furniture store. I'm reminded of Jeremiah 18 because we all have a master builder who gets us in the hands, gets us in his clay, gets some hand stuff and starts to mold us in the back room. And then the back room, that's where you begin to get shaped. It, was in the back room where your theology got formed. It was in the back room where your patience began to get tried, especially with that little girl in Con Ed 1. It was in the back room where God developed you in order to get your ego in check. It was in the back room where things in your life began to shift. So here it is. I share with you today, my brother and my friend, that as you are going into a new level and as God has called fit for you to be put on display today, I want you to be reminded and not confused that because you are now in the showroom does not mean you have arrived. Every now and again, as Reverend Jermaine, you will need to spend some time in the back room because the back room is where your strength comes from. The back room is where your heart gets healed. It's in the back room where your character comes from. As a matter of fact, it was in the back room where God reminded you that the cattle on a thousand hill belong to him. It was in the back room where he said, you are the lender and not the borrower. It was in the back room where he told you that you are the head and not the tail. It's in the back room where everything that you thought God had forgot about, that he reminded you that soon one day will come where not only your name will change, but I will put you on display. So my brother, as you move to the showroom today, remember your backroom experiences because it does not yet appear what you shall be. And today you shall be the Reverend Jermaine Pearson. My brother, my friend, God bless you. And may God continue to keep you. Amen. 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 Amen, and good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you so much for having me here today. My name is Virginia Schilder, and I'm a first year Master of Divinity student, so that uh, <laughs> Jeremy's performance really spoke to me today. Um, and this past spring, I graduated from Brown, which is where I got to know Jermaine. Um, and Jermaine has just had such a profound impact on my life, so it's a tremendous blessing and privilege to be speaking today. In, I'm a Catholic, and in Catholic feminist and womanist theology, it's often said that gifts are given to individuals for the sake of the flourishing of the community. And I think Jermaine is really evidence of that truth. So as I'm sure many of you know, Jermaine's the Protestant chaplain at Brown, working in the Office of Religious Life, which is where I intersected with him a lot 
But the main way I came to know Jermaine was through Harmonizing Grace, or HG as we call it, which is Brown's gospel choir, which Jermaine leads. And I don't exaggerate when I say that HG was the single most important activity of my time in college. It was a huge source of love and joy and community, a site of learning and personal growth for me, and it radically transformed my spiritual life. And that's because of Jermaine. He made the space alive. He made it into a powerful and liberating space of worship and community. And it's true that without HG, there would be no, without Jermaine, there would be no HG. Yes, because he takes care of all the logistical work, but he also guided us through some serious challenges. Jermaine showed us what it means to step up with honesty and authenticity when there are hard decisions to be made and how that's a part of ministry too. But more than all that, his energetic, humble and compassionate leadership made the choir vital and joyful and helped it grow. He has a gift for building community and bringing folks together and knowing just what kind of food will do it. His example taught me the loving power of greeting each individual person with excitement and enthusiasm. Now, I'm a member of the LGBTQ plus community, so religious spaces are not always friendly to me, especially being a Catholic. Um, not always places where I can bring my full self. But Jermaine welcomed and affirmed me and created a space where I could love and praise God fully as I am. And hear me when I say that that is one of the greatest gifts a minister could ever, ever give to a person. And Jermaine doesn't just care for each of his students, he empowers young folks. I've watched Jermaine work patiently and encouragingly with inexperienced singers like myself but with great positivity and compassion, he made us feel safe enough to open ourselves and discover the joy of praising God with our voices. Indeed, as we just saw, Jermaine uses his musical gifts as powerful tools of ministry, and anyone who knows him knows what a talented artist he is, but what makes his music and his preaching and his poetry most special is the energy and power and sheer joy that rises out of him that you can see coming through him. His music is prayer, and with it, he poured divinity into our choir. Now, I'm really interested in political advocacy, and Jermaine also showed me how I could bring music and ministry as forces for justice, as, for example, he led us to sing at the Rhode Island State House at a rally against gun violence. And in hard times, he taught us, he taught me, how to move through stress with grace, how to lean on sources of resilience in our communities, in our faith, and in our music because that's what Jermaine does in his own life. He lives what it means to trust God. Now, beyond our choir, I also would not be where I am today in my own vocational journey without Jermaine. He mentored me through the process of discerning to apply to Divinity School, but also through the actual application process. I mean, he went above and beyond to advise me, to reach out to admissions officers, to find out information about schools, write rec letters, everything. Um, so his encouragement, his advocacy, and his guidance not only helped me get to the program I'm in today, but he also helped me to look inward, to better understand myself and my vocations and see possibilities for my ministry that I didn't even know about. He saw me fully and completely and walked with me. And I know that Jermaine has similarly walked with so many other young folks, mentoring and encouraging them, providing comfort, support, and love to them through his pastoral care and his community building. Jermaine saw the worth and value in harmonizing grace, and he put his whole self into it and brought each of his gifts to the choir. And he does the same with each individual person. He certainly did it for me. So, when I heard the news of Jermaine's ordination, I was excited, of course, but the first thing that came to my mind was the phrase that we Catholics say in our Mass, which is, it is truly right and just. Where he brings his gifts, there is flourishing. Jermaine, I know that you're going to continue to lift others up through your work and your art, your contagious joy and humor, your capacious heart, your buoyant spirit, and your deep, deep faith. You have truly and radically said yes, and in saying yes to God, you've also said yes to all of us. So what a gift that has been for me, and what a gift it is for your community. God is so, so good, and may she continue to shower grace and light on you. Amen. 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 Amen.
Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Congratulations, Jermaine. We are so proud of you. I thought that this song would be fitting for the occasion, and I want you to listen to the words. It's simply called Make Me Careful. Listen and be blessed. Lord, sometimes I don't know where to go. As I pray, please show me the right road. According to your will, make me careful of what I am asking for. Make me careful of what I am praying for. Make me careful. We'll receive what you have for me. For much is given, much is required, yes it is. Lord, I'm your servant, but sometimes I get tired. Yes, I do, but I won't complain. Well, this is my prayer each and every night. The job I must do till I'm over there. Make me careful of what I am asking for. Make me careful of what I'm praying for, what I'm praying for, Lord. Make me careful. You know just what I need, Lord. You know just what I need, Lord. Make me careful. Lord, you are the potter. So that I will receive what you have for me. Amen. 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 Yes, yes. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. Amen. Beautiful. Beautiful. Good afternoon, everybody. It's um, just truly amazing to see the possibility of an ordination on Zoom. I feel like every day I'm seeing something new and it's not a surprise to me that Jermaine is the inviter for all of us to this possibility. So uh, blessings uh, from all of the team up on the hill at Brown University, the chaplaincy, um, Virginia, how wonderful to hear your testimony to its impact on your life. Um, but all of us, I think, are on this call and praying in our many traditions, Jermaine, um, with all of the brothers and sisters in the UCC and the Catholic Communion and beyond. I can't imagine um, that God is not fully paying attention. So I want to tell you, Jermaine, as we begin, sermons don't usually begin by buttonholing one person, but this is actually your doing. Um, we rarely say that at church. 
when we come together, it is the community of God's people gathering, but uh, we've each arrived here today for a single reason, which is that your calling and your yes saying to God was finally something that was just so strong and so loud and so clear in your bones and in your heart and in your head that you had to say it to some others too. And bless your heart from the great communion of the United Church of Christ, we're really honored and glad that you've said it within this church home, but frankly, on behalf of all God's people, we receive you with not one touch of chauvinism, but with boatloads, buckets full, hearts full of gratitude. So we say thank you on behalf of God's communions in so many modes of faith, for the stepping forward of one more who hears in his heart a yes. So I know that once you were talking to the powers that be, those are some of the folks on this call, they have titles and names and committees and structures, their reply too was, as you told us, yes, Lord. But just like back there, Candler, that yes, Lord came with a but or an and. Uh, you'll need to get us a transcript. We'll need some references. Uh, you'll have to finish one more unit of CPE and you've got to learn UCC polity. And, and then there's the ordination paper. Please outline your entire theology of faith and do tell us about your faith journey. Could you get that done in X number of pages? And, and then when you're all done with that, we'll, we'll just put it out there in the whole denomination and anybody who wants to can have at you ask you any question they wish. We call that an ecclesiastical council. And when that all goes well, then we'll say, yes, Lord. But you see, we won't rehearse today some of what you might have said along the way about all of those hurdles. I can remember a few comments we shared together in the hallways of Paige Robinson, and I promise those are under my pastoral seal. But you did it. Every one of those hurdles cleared because God is your strength and God was at your side. And I did think just because it wouldn't somehow be fitting to put you through all this business of assembling, I'm counting 77 people on this Zoom call, that's pretty amazing, right? And many more by spirit. We're here together because of something that got started by John Calvin in the Ecclesiastical Ordinances of 1541. Now, they weren't expecting us, not me, not you, not people of our backgrounds, educations, colors, or polity, but it still was Calvin's wisdom for the church to say that in the structure of human society, there are ordinances of God. And when one comes upon these ordinances of God, family, companionship, community, social order that nourishes, houses, and sustains, when one comes to these ordinances, one sees with eye, and ear and heart, the providence, hear the word, the providence of God. So today, while 1541 and John Calvin are not often cited by any of us anymore, I want you to know that we stand together, the United Church of Christ, to bear witness to the ordinances of God that call forward from God's people those who are called to ministry. And with thanksgiving and blessing, we bear witness. We do this in marriage. We do this at death. We do this in the sacraments of baptism and communion. And today, we do it with the laying on of hands by which we say not just in word, but we say in action in love, in covenant, with our whole hearts, yes. 
So with all those hurdles and steps completed, perhaps when it's your turn on the church and ministry committee, you'll set some of them aside, or you'll decide that one of those candidates needs even one more course, one more paper. I have to say it's been done. But with all of those hurdles set aside, you have arrived today, if I may say it, less innocent than you were when this all began. When we're young and we wonder if God calls us, we think that yes saying is very simple. That it's a binary matter like a light switch. It's either yes or it's no. You've grown. You've walked with Virginia and many more. You have seen this world in this moment of pandemic cracked open with illness and fear. You've seen our nation torn apart in factions and worry. You have seen violence more than anyone should see and we have seen it with you. We don't come to this moment of ordination as a communion of Christ or as individuals with innocence. And yet, we come hearing the yearning of the young for that clarity that God does still walk with us, that we are in fact called, and that in fact there is a way forward. You pointed us out, this out to us on the cover of the bulletin. I do have to tell you in my parish days, we always used to argue about whether anybody ever looked at the cover of the bulletin. But I hope you have, and just in case you haven't, I want to share my screen. And I have to tell you, I'm not good at this, so hang on. I hope you can see a few, a few images in front of you. They were my best effort at gathering you to a place where the yes that's on the front of your bulletin derives. I want to tell you a little story about this yes because it's not simple and it really is a remarkable metaphor of what it is we see and say yes to in this moment. This yes is from something that is known as the Dumbo mural. If you're a Brooklynite, you might know what I'm talking about when I talk about Dumbo. And if you've been on Brown Zoom calls recently, you might know that Jermaine is really pretty expert at things Disney. It's not that Dumbo. On the 5th of September in 2013, this mural done by Yoko Shimizu, who is the beautiful woman standing in front of you, a Japanese mural artist, not probably very different in age than Jermaine, but I'm not going to re reveal any secrets here, completed this mural at the request of the Walls of Dumbo organization. Dumbo is an acronym. It stands for Down Under the Manhattan Bridge Overpass. It's in fact a neighborhood of Brooklyn that is quite a posh address, and it looks back across the East River at Manhattan. Lights gleaming, the Brooklyn and Manhattan Bridge, its boundaries. If you look carefully in the picture of the mural itself, which is the bottom one, I think, on your screen, you'll see bicyclists whizzing by in front of that mural. This is the passage that takes you under the bridge and right past the subway tunnel for the F train. As Rhode Islanders, I know it's against the rules to know anything about anything that happens outside Rhode Island, but I have to admit that I have a son who lived for 15 years in Brooklyn. I have walked under this underpass many, many times. It's the underpass that connects the projects to Dumbo. It's the underpass that, as I mentioned, takes you past the entrance to the F train. And the F train, less than one year 
before this mural was painted had 1.5 million gallons of water in its tunnel. It switches and tracks being corroded by salt water and its future very much at risk. This mural with the central yes came to be after Sandy's threat and danger were very clear. Threats of a passing and changing climate, threats that actually held the promise of severing the arteries of the city of New York and making it impossible for her boroughs and her people to commute together, to speak together, to be together. I'm going to get rid of my screen share now so I can see you better, but I'm happy to share this image later if you'd like to see it. Do look carefully at the central one, which actually is much the same language, but done in black and white. The arteries that connect New York and that make of her a city of peoples in different communities, rich and poor, joined by subways and underpasses, some living in high rise with beautiful views and others barely living at all. Those passages were the things that became very evident as they flooded and threat threatened to collapse. The F train's tunnel is under construction right now as we speak. And in fact, it would be a disaster for the commute to New York, but for the fact that COVID has emptied Manhattan. None could have imagined, as in ministry we cannot imagine, what the future will hold. But emblazoned on the walls of that underpass, where all must walk to wait for the subway that will rarely come for the next six weeks while the repairs are made, to wait with those who will ride their bikes underneath, some walking to fancy restaurants which are slowly beginning to open, and others back to the crumbling walls of the project to wonder if the Brooklyn city government will have any money to contribute to the playgrounds and the repairs of the basketball hoops. Shimizu's art bears witness and says yes to the reality of the rising and the raging waters that made it necessary to reaffirm New York's above and below ground arteries. The importantness and the humbleness of her walls and their messages are meant to converge. It's exuberant, it's an octopus, it's the ocean, it's the waves, it's a yes, but it's a defiant yes where the threat of no is very real. Like Moses, Shimizu's art lays bare in its black and white mirrored image, a core message of her art, just in case you might miss it. You remember this moment. As Moses draws near to the waters and will not cross over, he lays out blessing and cursing for Israel as she prepares to depart. And then as though a student not well prepared for a test doesn't even risk the fact that of course it's obvious to choose blessing and life. And Moses shouts loudly, choose life. Jermaine, I hear you shouting to us today as your church that you're claiming, this locale, this neighborhood of the church, not all of our work, not the centuries of our commitment and not the centuries of challenge that lie ahead. But I hear you saying yes, so that we will say yes back. I hear us saying yes back, so you will please say yes and honor that calling that God has given. It is excruciatingly clear what the Lord requires of us and what it is we must say yes to. As you chose beautifully from this passage in Timothy, we are to set believers an example in speech and in conduct in love and in faith and in purity. We're to give attention to the public reading of scripture, to exhorting, to teaching, and to not neglecting the gifts we've been given through prophecy and the laying on of hands 
and the Council of Elders, those assembled around you today, to in fact do exactly that. Lay hands and bless, so that your yes saying and the church's yes saying may be a powerful statement in all of the underpasses of life, where we least expect to find color and vibrancy and honesty about the rising waters, about the potential destruction, and about the capacity in the face of those waters to walk in the words of the Easter hymn with unmoistened foot through the Red Sea waters. Sermon images at their best are buoyant. I resist the pun to tell you that Shimizu put these waters before us and you walked on them. The Dumbo mural, whether intentional in your choosing or just a gift of your Chicago upbringing where there are many other murals and statements that come out of the hearts of the people God calls us to serve, to serve, I can't say. I wish I'd asked you, but you'll tell me later. I do know that the tasks of our resistance in the face of the rising waters are ones we must take up with mindfulness in the subways, at the underpasses, and that we must pledge ourselves, even as these places are threatened and drowning, that we will stand in the middle of them, declaring God's wisdom, God's compassion, and God's insistence that if we will say yes to life, God's yes will come back to us. Our journey to God's realm will surely be beset with storms. Literally, our shorelines are battered, and our hillsides in California are burning. Our time is changing around us, and so our ministry in the world must change too. And for all of the preaching and praying and reading of scripture we're called to do, I pray that you'll continue to do it as you've done since the day I met you, on the green, on the stage, in the middle of the street, in the middle of the night, in activities and meetings, when people let least expect it, and whether they'll know that we, your beloved United Church of Christ, laid our hands and blessed you to do this really matters to me very little. It matters to me a lot that you know it. And that when that journey feels lonely or strange, when it's not clear what's coming next, when you've ventured far from this city named Providence, you will remember with Calvin's 50, 1541 Institutes, that we remain together in the ordinances of God, under God's providence and sustained by God's yes, to which we must only reply, yes. So you, dear brother, have said yes today to serve God. You know full well what life has already taught you. There are too many police shootings. There are too many raging pandemics. There are the temperatures of rising in the world too swiftly. But together, God has called us to walk through this and to walk through it in love and with compassion toward all those coming behind us and to those who are counting on us to open a way for them. I want to be very clear. Your yes is not something you should say alone. Having uttered it and having honored us by saying it to us, we say yes back. We promise in these moments to very simply be there and pray with you and for you and about you and through you to all of the things that together we must do. I promise you we'll call you at the wrong time. We'll ask you for money you don't have. We'll want time you already gave away. We'll put 14 more things on your list than you have time to accomplish. And then we'll tell you how compassionate we are because we'll take 12 off. We love you. We honor you. We're so ex excited and inspired by your work. And while we are hearing you say yes, dear Jermaine, we loudly say yes, with God being our intended hearer. May God hear us together saying yes. And with God's companionship, may we step into every place to which we're called together and sing. Amen. Man. Man.
Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Jermaine, are you ready? So we begin. Beloved, if you will please mute. Thank you. Beneficent Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, after carefully considering the call to ordained ministry of Jermaine LaVon Pearson, respectfully requests that the Rhode Island Association ordain him to the ministry of the Church of Jesus Christ, consistent with scripture and with the traditions of the church universal and according to the faith and order of the United Church of Christ. The Committee on Church and Ministry of the Rhode Island Association has reviewed the request of Beneficent Congregational Church, United Church of Christ. We have prayerfully examined Jermaine Pearson concerning his fitness for ministry in Christ Church. We are pleased on behalf of the United Church of Christ to authorize the ordination of Jermaine Pearson into the Christian ministry. Jermaine Pearson, servant of God, we invite you to come forward as a sign of your consent to receive ordination into Christian ministry. The <laughs> Church of Christ acknowledges as its sole head, Jesus Christ, Son of God and Savior, it acknowledges as kindred in Christ all who share in this confession. It looks to the word of God in the scriptures and to the presence and power of the Holy Spirit to prosper its creative and redemptive work in the world. It claims as its own faith of the historic church expressed in the ancient creeds and reclaimed in the basic rights of the Protestant reformers. It affirms the responsibility of the church in each generation to make this faith its own in reality and worship and thought and expression and in pure part in the wrong event holy communion. Church of Christ recognizes that God calls the whole church and every member to participate in and ministry, witnessing to the gospel in church and society. The United Church of Christ seeks to undergird the ministry of its and equipping members for Christian service. Ordination is the right whereby the United Church of Christ through an association in cooperation with the person and a local church, the United Church of Christ recognizes <clears throat> recognizes and authorizes that member whom God has called to ordained ministry and sets that person apart by prayer and the laying on of hands. By this right, ordained ministerial standing is conferred and authorization given to perform the duties and exercise the prerogatives of ordained ministry in the United Church of Christ. Jermaine Pearson, brother in Christ, hear these words from the prophet Isaiah. I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And then I said, Here I am, send me. How wonderful it is to see a messenger coming across the mountains, bringing good news, the news of peace. The messenger announces victory and says to Zion, Your God reigns. The Spirit of God is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor, heal the brokenhearted, proclaim liberty to the captives, and freedom to those who are bound. Germain, before God and this congregation, we ask you, 
Are you persuaded that God has called you to be an ordained minister of the Church of Jesus Christ and are ready, with the help of God, to enter this ministry and to serve faithfully in it? I am. Caroline, you need to unmute yourself. Sorry, Jermaine. Do you, Jermaine, with the church throughout the world, hear the word of God in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments? And do you accept the word of God as the rule of Christian faith and practice? I do. Do you promise to be diligent in your private prayers and in reading the scriptures, as well as in the public duties of your office. I do, relying on God's grace. Will you be zealous in maintaining both the truth of the gospel and the peace of church, speaking the truth in love? I will, relying on God's grace. Will you be faithful in preaching and teaching the gospel, in administering the sacraments, and rights of the church, and in exercising pastoral care and leadership? I will, relying on God's grace. Will you hold sacred all confidences shared with you? I will, relying on God's grace. And will you seek to regard all people with equal love and concern, and undertake, and undertake to minister impartially to the needs of all? I will, relying on God's grace. Do you accept the faith and order of the United Church of Christ? And will you, as an ordained minister in this communion, ecumenically reach out toward all who are in Christ and show Christian love to people of other faiths and people of no faith? I will, relying on God's grace. And this is in the time in the service, Jermaine, that you would be kneeling and we would be laying our hands on you, which we are all going to do now. I have a few words, but I would also encourage everyone here, whether you are listening, you are on video, to please reach your hands forward, Jermaine. The Holy Spirit, I can feel surging through, seriously. May you feel... Uh, both the weight and the lightness of our hands and our spirits. For the laying on of hands is the symbolic act whereby the church in every age recognizes God's call to ministry in the lives of faithful women and men and asks the Holy Spirit to confer on them gifts for ordained ministry. People of God, you have heard the promises Jermaine Pearson has made. What is your will? By the grace of God, let us ordain, we'll ordain him. him. Come, come, Holy Spirit, come. come. Will you support Jermaine Pearson in the ministry of Christ? We will. 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 Yes, we will. Not a doubt. Can you feel us, Jermaine? <laughs> Let us pray. Eternal God, in wisdom you govern all things, and from the and from the beginning you have chosen faithful people to serve you in ministry, calling some apostles, some prophets some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip all your people for the work of the ministry and for the building up of the body of Christ. Now bless and sanctify by your Holy Spirit, your servant, Jermaine LaVon Pearson, who we in your name and obedience to your will, by prayer and with the laying on of our hands, ordain to the ministry of the church committing to him the authority to preach your word, administer the sacraments, 
and exercise the responsibilities of pastor and teacher. Bestow on Germain the power of your Holy Spirit, confirming what we do. Let the same mind be in his that was also in Christ Jesus. Enable him to nourish your people in the faith of the gospel. Fill his speech with truth and his life with purity. Increase the faith of Germain in you. Strengthen him in the day of trouble. Prosper his words and works that your name may be glorified and your truth exalted. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Sovereign. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ, the head of the church and the authority of the Southern New England Conference, Rhode Island Association of the United Church of Christ, I declare ordained the minister. You are granted ordained minister in the United Church of Christ and on behalf of Amen. Put those words in the chat. Amen. 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 On behalf of the Rhode Island Association of the Southern New England Conference of the United Church of Christ, I present to you this certificate of your ordination, which will arrive to you signed by all kinds of very important people in the mail. And it will be, it's suitable for hanging on the wall of whatever place you may be, but you, and we, it comes with our love, our blessing, our gratitude, and our prayers for all of your ministry and all of your life. In God's name, amen. 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 I guess um, beneficent. Reverend. Reverend. <laughs> Reverend. Reverend. Amen. Reverend. Reverend. <laughs> I've been waiting. I've been holding back. I've been trying to say that. <laughs> Reverend. I'll Reverend be Germain, beneficent is so proud of you. And mm -hmm. So delighted for you today. We have enthusiastically cheered you on as you have run this race that has been set before you. And you have run it with patience, determination, strength, and grace. We, your church, will watch with great anticipation as your ministry continues to unfold. We will pray for you, and we hope you will pray for us. We want you to have all the resources you need for ministry, and we also want you to stay grounded in this denomination that has been lucky enough to catch you. So I'm putting into the mail a copy of the UCC Book of Worship, this is not yours, this is mine, and it's quite tattered now, and yours will be too in due time. This is Beneficent's gift to you. There are some good prayers and liturgy in this book. Use them, amend them, but don't let them have the final word. God is still speaking through you, Germaine. So add your own words 
to these always. May God bless you with strength, wisdom, courage, joy, and peace. Let all God's people say, Amen. 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 I am so overjoyed, you all. Uh, you just don't know. <laughs> so I need to, to, to do a little bit of recap. So in 2005, Thanksgiving 2005, uh, my Kappa brothers, uh, we assembled at a church on the west side for Thanksgiving. And we uh, fed food to the, to, the, to the needy, but we also had a church and worship service. And so we were all there as a chapter. And the pastor sent the message to the moderator and said, we need some students to come up and testify and inspire the younger folk in the audience. So my, my line brother, my best friend, my roommate, Jared Hall, got up there. You know, they kind of voluntold us because we were the Neos. And Jared, Jared is a great speaker, but, you know, he wasn't really in the church at the time. So, you know, he got up there and he said some things, which, you know, me, you know, I came after him and I grew up in the church. So I, you know, I ran off the list of, you know, protocol being a, in a Black Baptist church, you know, the guy who's out of my life to the pastors, the deacons, the usher board. You know, it's so good to be in the house of the Lord. I was glad when they said that to me, let us go into the house. So I knew what to say, right? Uh, and I think I ended like, I'll pray for you as you continue to pray for me. And so I went back to my seat and the pastor who had been silent the entire time said, bring that young man back up to the altar he's been called to preach. And I remember looking at Jerry and the rest of my frat brothers like, what is it? did he just say? What's going on? And literally, they came and drugged me, the deacons. They dragged me to the altar and they laid their hands on me. That was in 2005. Uh, so I suppressed that memory until I moved to California and LA in 2010. Five years later, this scripture uh, in First Timothy came up in my morning devotional. Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you through prophecy with the laying of the hands by the council of elders. And I said, oh, no, this cannot be it. No, I do not want to go into ministry. That's not my thing. I want to be famous. That's why I'm here in L.A. And I went, I said, God, if you want me to preach, you're going to have to send an angel down here and let me know. And so I was in the furniture store, just like Dominique <laughs> shared. Uh, and this Korean brother, he spoke a word in my life. He says, yeah, you just moved here and you've been called to minister to the people. And so, you know, stop running. And so since then... I realized that, okay, I gotta say yes. So this is where the whole theme of this, the service came up. And then Lily, now, that was 2010. Five years later in 2015, I find myself at the Campbell School of Theology not really knowing why I had gone because I was just so tired <laughs> and I was so worn out. And, but I just remember saying, you know, just, just say yes. And so I had no clue. That's what you saw in the, the spoken word presentation. I had no clue what was gonna happen but I trusted God throughout the entire process. And in 2020, here it is, I am in Providence, Rhode Island, <laughs> getting ordained. So something happens every five years, something of significance. And I was looking up the, his, the significance, the biblical significance of the number five. And it said that number five represents God's goodness and grace. And so it is because of God's grace that I am here. And this has been, um, there's nothing that I would have imagined my, for myself. Never in a million years that I think that I would be living in Providence, Rhode Island, working at an Ivy League institution, being part of such a wonderful denomination and church and just doing the work that I've been called to do. So I'm forever grateful um, for this journey. And I just want to thank all of you all. I've been on this journey every step of the way. Uh, I have to give some shout outs and I'm going to break it down by family, frat and friends. Um, my family, thank you so much. My Chicago family, I see you all. I see all of you all. I see a few hurts as well. To the Pearson family, thank you so much. Uncle Stan, thank you so much for your song. I appreciate it. Everybody think I can sing, but I really try to sound like my uncle, and I, I try, but I can't. But one day, I'm going to try to get up to his level. Uh, but thank you so much. I see all my, my cousins, my aunts. Um, and my mom is here. She came yesterday, and she flew in from Chicago because she didn't want me to be by myself. So, uh, you know, I did not expect to be ordained via Zoom, but, you know, we're in the middle of a pandemic, so we're going with the flow. So I'm so thankful that my mom is here. Cheryl, give, give, a, give everybody a wave. 
<laughs> if you can. Uh, we are so thankful that you are here. Um, my frat brothers, I have to give a shout out to Kappa Alpha Psi fraternity uh, and uh, the Kappa Phi chapter from uh, my brothers in Long Beach, Inglewood South Bay to brothers here in Boston, LZ, uh, and even Providence alumni, you all have welcomed me so much. It is because of Kappa that I found my call, literally, or I was given my call. Uh, so I will ever be truly grateful uh, for the brotherhood and the bond. Thank you so much for just being a part of the journey. Thank you so much, uh, Bishop Harris, for being my spiritual father here in Providence, uh, in Boston, in New England. So thank you so much for your participation. Uh, my friends, and this is a broad sense, I think everybody is my friend. And so I want to thank all those who are here. Um, I want to start with my friends from school, if I attended school with you and had some type of interaction, I see you all on the call, on the call uh, especially to my, my Candler crew. I see a few of us. It was, um, I'm thankful to Dominique. He was, he's one fifth of the Candler crew, the rest are on the call. And I'm so thankful for the crew that they, they held me together. Literally, they held me together and forced me to graduate because I wanted to drop out every single semester when I was at Emory, every single semester. So thankful for them. I'm thankful for um, my Brown students, uh, my Harmonizing Grace. You all mean so much to me. Uh, and you are the reason why I'm here. Like, you are literally the reason why I'm here. So I'm so thankful uh, for just being uh, influential in my life. Virginia, I really do appreciate your words. Uh, you are the person that I, I say I have to give Virginia because we worked so close together over the past three years. So I'm so proud of the woman you are becoming and you are going to do some great things in ministry yourself. Uh, my friends at Beneficent uh, Congregational Church, uh, you all just welcome me and open up your loving arms to a brother from Chicago. Uh, and I'm so thankful that I have definitely found a church home where I can be me and utilize all my gifts in singing and, and, and preaching and, and teaching and all those things. And so I'm so thankful uh, to Pastor Elizabeth. Uh, thank you so much uh, for just being a great pastor, just being a great pastor. Um, pastor Cleo, uh, thank you so much for your participation today. I knew I had to get Pastor Cleo because Pastor Cleo has really helped me throughout this journey of uh, going through the ordination process and learning the UCC polity and culture. Uh, and she puts me several times like, oh no, you're gonna get this done this year, this year. And so I'm so thankful for you. I'm thankful where God is taking you uh, and I'm so excited that our paths were able to cross. Um, you can keep the books. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, Ernest and the music department, you all bless me. You all sang exactly what I want you to sing. Thank you so much. That, that's what I wanted. Uh, those songs that you sang, I chose that specifically because we used to sing that at my church, growing up in my grandfather's church. That was part of the, the gospel choir. They used to sing that song. Yes, Lord, yes. And that was what I wanted. Uh, and thank you so much. Then you even switched it up and gave a, a little Pentecostal, Kojic style with the, the ending. Yes, so I appreciate that. Like you really incorporated everything that I wanted uh, in, in this service. Uh, to the Committee on Ministry, uh, Committee on Church and Ministry, thank you so much. And the Rhode Island Association, I really do appreciate this opportunity um, to, 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 to be a part of a, a, a great conference. Uh, and I, I plan to live up to the vows that I took today. Um, and I'm so thankful. Uh, I have to give a shout out to, to Pastor Kurt, who's been my mentor in this thing. <laughs> uh, and so I don't know how they matched us up, but I think it was, it was a perfect combination. It was a perfect fit. And so I'm so thankful for his inspiration because at one point I'm like, I don't think this is gonna happen. Like, I, 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 I don't wanna go back and do a CPE. Like, I'm good, I'm, I'm, like, I'm like, I'm done. But he's like, no, you can do it, you can do it. So thank you so much for encouraging me. Uh, and pushing me. Uh, last but not least, I want to thank uh, my boss, Janet Cooper Nelson. Thank you so much. And so for those who don't know, when I came, uh, when I saw my job, literally in 2000, was that 2017, I was, uh, I saw the job posted at Brown as an interim associate university chaplain for the Protestant community. I was only at my job at Loyola for a brief, brief second. Uh, and I saw this job and I said to myself, hmm, this sounds like an interesting job, but I don't, I don't know anything about Rhode Island. And it was, in fact, I ended up passing the opportunity to a colleague. I said, hey, I think you should apply for this job. You'll be a good fit. And then God spoke to me when I was in Cuba. He said, go, go back and look at this job. 
and like this is your job and so one of the requirements was that you had to be ordained and of course <laughs> i'm not a, i wasn't ordained then uh and i applied anyway i'm like this is my job and so i met janet cooper nelson and i told her i said listen i'm not ordained but i think i'm the perfect person for this job i was very bold very audacious uh and lo and behold i ended up getting the position and it has truly changed my life. So I'm so thankful to have a great boss who lets me lead and, and, and trust me. Uh, and it's very, you know, it's not a micromanager, uh, but definitely trust that I'm gonna do the work of, of, of the office and the work of the Lord. So thank you so much. Um, to everyone who's on this call, this has really blessed me. You, you don't know, it was over 78 participants. And so I'm so thankful. I see former students, I see, former mentors, like a, a lot of the stuff that you see me now is the, the singing, that's my, my, my mentors from Emory Mari and just, just people, my, my family from California, I see y'all. And I don't wanna give too many shout outs because I end up forgetting people, but I'm just so thankful that God has allowed me to be here and I did say yes. And so looking at these last 15 years, it's been a, a amazing, tough, tough journey, uh, but I'm so glad that I said yes. And that was the whole purpose of this service and the theme of the service today. So I don't want to belabor the time. Uh, I thank you so much for each of you who have participated in my journey. Uh, I'm greatly and forever indebted to you. And I promise to live hope, to uphold the standards of the UCC uh, and be the person that God has called me to be. Uh, I'm going to end one of my favorite songs uh, is Total Praise uh, by Richard Smallwood. Uh, it's always been one of my favorite songs. We used to sing it back in Glee Club at Emmanuel Christian School in Chicago. And so I'm going to ask that uh, Brother Ernest close us out, and then I'll come back with the benediction. <laughs> service that we do, Lord God. We ask that you bless me as I go forth and do what you have called me to do. Continue to bless me to be a vessel unto your people. Do the work of that your son has taught us to do. So God, I thank you. I thank you for everyone who has gathered here today. I thank you for each and the one who's played an important part in my life. And those who are here, those who have gone on to work with God, know that they're here watching with us, God. So we thank you for this, this journey, Lord. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior, glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Reverend! Congratulations, Reverend Jermaine. <laughs> <laughs>
love you, Jermaine. Congratulations, Jermaine. So proud of you. Congratulations, man. Congratulations. Congratulations, Congratulations Jermaine. God bless you, brother. Love you, brother. Congratulations, bro. Congratulations, man. Congratulations, Congratulations, brother. I love you. Congratulations. Much love, love you, bro. Much love. You girls Congratulations, Jermaine. Thank you. Congratulations. Yes. Congratulations. Yes. Congratulations, yes. Congratulations yes. Reverend Joe. Yes. Hey, yo. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Heard that was too. Congratulations. Congratulations. Man, I see you all. We love you, Jermaine. Congratulations. You deserve it. Congratulations. Talk later. God bless you. You all have made this service uh, great. I like I said, I was never thought that I would get ordained via Zoom, but this has been a good service. I've been, I laughed, I <laughs> I cracked up myself. <laughs> Typical Jermaine. So I've I've enjoyed myself. Thank you for all who have participated, and I've been inspired. So thank you so much. Congratulations, Jermaine. We love you, bro. Congratulations again. Thank you. Yes. Thanks, Jermaine. You did a wonderful job. It's good to see you there in the office. I'm glad to know the Browns in good shape. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> Just down the street. God bless you, Jermaine. God bless you too. Thank you all. I see my family in Cali. Whoop, whoop. My family in Chicago. <laughs> Houston in the house. Houston is in, is in the house. I see Brockton, Brockton. Detroit's in the house. Detroit's in the house. Okay, everybody, I see. <laughs> Newark's in the house. Newark. Oh, the Detroit in the house. Let's see y'all. Okay. Thank you all so much. Oh, thank sure. you. I appreciate it. Yeah.